Notice the devastating thing that could happen here. Suppose you guys are all one tutorial group and you are the joker. The joker waits till everyone has submitted their code and we're about to do the first pun. Then the joker submits a new interface. <laughs> yes, secretly written code that complies with the new interface. No one else's functions comply with the new interface. Everyone else in the tube is wiped out. But this is the reason we put you in groups based on tutorials, because he has to turn up to the next class. <laughs>
Uh, the thing we're, like the stuff we're giving in this week is worth five marks. The um, thing you're giving this week's worth five marks, that's right. Yeah, um, the ADT will be marked by spots. How will the unit test be marked? The unit test and ADTs are marked at the same, in the same way. So are you marked on how many people you can, like, bust? Um, so I might just revise spots, or it might not be revision, I may never have explained it properly before. That's, thanks for that question. There's a big table. Uh, the test, I can never remember which way it goes. Is it tests on the top, ADTs down the side? Yeah. yeah. So, ADTs down here, tests, testers across here. You've written a tester. You've written an ADT. Whew. Now you only get ADT, you only get marks for the ADT if it's correct. If it's correct, you get all the marks. If it's not correct, you don't get all the marks. That's it. There's no, there's no in-betweens. It's either correct or not. For the tests, Tests aren't quite do or die like that. There is a die, which is if you fail someone who's correct, if you make, you know, there's sort of, whenever you're testing something, have I drawn this picture before? There's four things that can happen. If this is, in this quadrant, reality, which we can never really know, and this is our testing. Yep, these are our scientific theories. This is what the universe is really like. Our testing could reveal something is false or true, and the reality could be it's either false or true. So your tester could identify it as false if it really was false. It could fail something that really was broken. Woohoo! That's great. Your tester could pass something that really was correct. Woohoo! But notice there's two dumb things your tester could do. Well, dumb's not the right word. Two incorrect things your tester could do. One is it, the tester could say something is correct when actually in reality it's wrong. That's, say, a type 1 error. Or your tester could say something was wrong when in reality it's correct. That's a type 2 error. Which of these mistakes will cause the most pain to everyone else in the course? A type 2. Yeah, if you fail someone's code and it's correct, it's just going to annoy them and they've got to go through and prove it. So never make those mistakes. So there's do or die like that. If your tester actually fails someone that it shouldn't fail, boom, it's no good. It's out. It's gone. Zero. Nothing. You know, zero for that one particular hunt, that one particular time for that infinitesimal fraction of the mark. Or, or for the um, two and a half out of the five for this weekend. If you, um, however, if you accidentally say something is true that in reality is false, so if you pass an erroneous thing, then it's not a do or die. What we do is we rule out all testers we exclude all testers that have made this sort of mistake. Which one? This one here. Tester says it's false. We exclude all testers that make this sort of mistake. And then the mark for, and then for the remaining testers, we determine the mark as follows. It's the proportion that you get that are in here and here versus here. So if 90% are here and here and 10% is here, you get 0.90% of the mark. Does, now, who asked that question? Just so I can double check that answer. Did that answer it? Yes, your question. Um, and then your question after that. Also, the tester detects if your, the ADT you're given is wrong or bad, so you'll be given a bad ADT if you say it was true as well. Oh, yeah, then the other, <laughs> the other annoyance for passing something. If you pass something that really you shouldn't pass, you, you could get it. Yeah? It's like when you vote the government, <laughs> you make the wrong mistake, you, or the right mistake. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yes? Like Are you going to be marked against Ruth or anything like that? That's a good question. Will we be putting in bad ADTs and sneaky tests? It's unlikely we're going to be writing sneaky tests. It's very unlikely because it takes a lot of time. We'd have to write individual ones for each shoot. And what would be the point of that? Hopefully you guys now have enough incentive. You've got the next question. Hopefully um, you guys now have enough incentive to write the good ones. So I don't see any need for us to ever write ruthless tests. Hopefully your tests are ruthless enough. Will we ever write an evil ADT to try and get past your tests? Well, I'd like to leave that option open. 
for the following reason, that we've said there's this sort of really qualitative restriction we've put on it, that your ADT shouldn't be able to be bypassed. You shouldn't sort of leak all the information used to create the ADT through the ADT interface functions. So some slacker could come along and think, well, I'm not even going to use the Tutes ADT. I'll just recreate the original, extract the original information used to create the ADT, and I'll build my own ADT on the fly inside my hunter. And I'll bypass that whole idea of abstraction. I'll just do it all myself because I'm an Uber coder and I don't want to use anyone else's code or rely on it. And we don't want you to do that. We, I mean, the whole point of this thing is dividing the thing into two parts and having them inter interoperate like that. So we've said we don't want you to do that, but it's very hard to specify exactly what that means. So we've just sort of said it as a wishy-washy thing. Don't do that. Don't give enough information that someone can do that. Now, it's possible some chutes will then think, aha, <laughs> here's my interface. It's going to be like this. I'll leak all information except with probability one in a million, I'll change one of the bits of one of the things. <laughs> So you can't say I'm definitely releasing the same amount of information because there's probability one in a million that something's wrong. Or I'm releasing all the information, but I've changed it in such a way Rich will never realize I'm really, or something like that. And in which case, well, fair enough, we'll let you through. But then what I'll do is, if I have time, I'll write some diabolical ADTs that are really, really evil. And I'll write a million of them, and I'll flood your thing with them. And hopefully, it'll get past your tester, and then I'll catch you that way. Does that make sense? That's just my revenge of the Richard. And that can instantly be fixed at any instant by just removing any offending functions so that you really do comply with the spirit. Because you know what we're like. We love <laughs> complying with the letter and breaking the spirit. That's what makes computing fun. That's what we do. I'm sure whenever you see a set of rules, you instantly think, oh, -ho, ha -ha, it says this. I can technically do all that, but I can still get it. So here, I'm just saying the spirit. Oh, the spirit is, I don't want you to do that bypassing thing. If I notice someone doing it, I'll do something evil with the ADTs. But the evil thing I do with the ADTs will be to give you a broken ADT, and if your tests are good enough, you'll fend them off. So I'm not really doing anything evil. Okay. But maybe my evil ADT will be something like, one in a million times I do something wrong. <laughs> Comply with the spirit, but not the letter. Okay, uh, the letter, but not the spirit. Shh, 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 shh. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to be a dick. Really, just ask your tutors. You, you'll work out really quickly yourselves if if your um, interface is uh, what we want or not. And on Thursday, on this Thursday, I wonder if um, everyone wouldn't mind just publicly revealing all your interfaces so everyone in the course can see everyone else's interfaces. So it'll be sitting on a page somewhere if you could just make that visible to the whole world on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, you can change them if you want, but you've got to get unanimous consent. You mean someone might have a really good function you don't have, so you might want to put it in? Well, that's learning. That's fine. But gee, what pain it'll be to, to do that. Well, you don't want me to release them on, what about we release them on Friday? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that might happen. If everybody's looking at everybody else's ADTs, then... You know, I'm, yeah, so I see your concern. Your concern is people might benefit from other people's good ideas. But given this is in the context of a course, and the point of having the ADT exercise the way I've got it is I want you to think about how to design an ADT, I figured that that actually isn't a bad thing. Well, they've got to get unanimous consent, so, yeah, yeah. This, this probably won't happen. But can I, uh, can I double check? Is everyone happy that we release them on Thursday? Or would someone like to leave it as late as Friday before we release them all? Who wants Friday? And why is that? Don't care. <laughs> Any more Fridays? He's just been that guy. Okay, all right, let's say it's Thursday. And were there any more questions? Yeah, sorry. Um, are we still able to update our um, test, like unit tests, even though the lab was due? Yeah, yeah, you can keep updating your unit, unit test constantly. And I'll have to give a submit line in case it's not the same as for the lab. But yeah, you can constantly update your unit tests. In fact, I'm expecting you will, because I'm expecting the early unit tests you put in won't be quite right, and you'll see from the spots runs that there'll be problems, so you'll just tweak them and fix them all up. All right, well, that was good. I'm glad we had that time to talk about the project. Are there any more questions? All right, let's, um, let's now get on to the lecture. The review is a whole lot of students just like you guys with no intervention from responsible adults or staff of the uni or anything like that, just getting up and doing something amazing. Uh, and I'm so proud of you guys. Whenever I see the review, it makes me burst with pride for my students because it's this awesome show done by students just for students. You should totally support it. But more than that, when you go along, it's not just supporting it. 
It's amazingly good. It's so full of energy. I often go home after it and say to my wife, that is better than something I saw at the Opera House. Because at the Opera House, they had better sets. Sorry, if you're on sets. They had better lyrics. Sorry. They had better singers. <laughs> they had better plot. The room was nicer. And the refreshments were better. But, but the Opera House is completely sterile. You come out of it and you think this is slick and been done a million times. You come out completely unmoved and you go, yeah, 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 yawn, yawn, yawn. You go to this thing and you come out and you're electrified and you're so, oh, you're on a high and you're so full of energy. It's absolutely fantastic. So tell them about it. Well All right. Um, Richard basically introduced us pretty well, so it's not a whole lot that I have to say um, before I'll let David uh, talk to you. Um, people, you can see a lot of people around wearing these shirts. We have a band member up there who's a bass guitarist. We have Sam there who's doing a bunch of house stuff. We have a whole bunch of techies. Sorry, I don't remember you all. We've got Hayden and Justin and Andrew and Natalie and Michael. And, Michael and Richard. Um, there are a lot of people in this lecture who are involved in review. So before we start, can I get a show of hands? Who's planning on going to see a review this week? All right, yeah. If you haven't got your hands up, look around at the people around you and see how many of you have your hand up. Um, who's actually put their tickets for review? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that, that's a bit more of an issue. Um, tickets do sell fast, particularly, particularly the good seats. Um, oh, yeah, it does sell out. In previous years, I've left buying tickets till the end and I haven't been able to go because it sells out. It is, it is absolutely fantastic. It does sell out. So. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what a review is, it's a sketch comedy show that runs for two hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, this week, starts at 7.30ish each night. Um, it's a show by uni students, by mostly CSE students, for uni students, mostly CSE students, and <laughs> you guys are the prime audience. Most of this show has geeky, nerdy humour that is kind of wasted on art students, and we still get them to come and they enjoy the show, but you guys are our main audience, you are our main target. Um, you are us. There's all these jokes in there that, in fact, there's an entire song that has a Comp 1917 prerequisite for you to understand. <laughs> so, you guys really need to come see this show. You need to support your fellow students, your faculty, and have a great night out. See, um, uh, the people behind me have been rehearsing for about seven hours a day for the last two weeks, for about three weeks of cast and certainly the last week and a bit for tech and myself and the video team. Um, this is the, what they've been juggling with their lives, assignments, and the rest of their uni life. Uh, this show is CSE. It's CSE, your school, your show. You're part of CSE, whether you know it yet and fully recognize it or not. Um, so I'd like to see everyone in this theatre tonight at the show, because CSE sock is going. And it's because of this alumni vibe that you guys are going to get further down your course. Uh, there will be that kind of camaraderie that you'll experience. Review is a marker in your time at university where when you go out into the workforce, and I have been in the workforce for about three years, and I have gone through uni before, um, you will be able to look back with your uh, alumni and guys who you are with right now and from other years and from other parts of the university in different courses, and you'll be able to talk about the show. It's a marker. It's really a special thing for you guys to get involved with. And especially with what Jarrett has said, that it is so geared towards you guys, more, show, more so than any of the other reviews that you will be able to see. Um, yeah, there's a CC community. It's a way for all of us to, just to laugh together. If, it's, if uh, none of you guys, if some of you guys haven't quite gotten used to the uni lifestyle yet, all you need to do is realise that there is a lot more to uni than just assignments. All you need to do is look at the number of tents there are on open day to realise what the rest of the university is about. This is a way to get together and laugh and explain some of what you're doing. There are jokes that most people who aren't doing CSE who you're friends with won't get. It's a chance for you to explain them, for them to understand programming, for them to understand what you're doing. Uh, re review reflects us what's, it's what we do in our degree. Um, it, it's funny, you'll, you'll laugh, it's a cheap way to spend a night out, and it's a good break. Uh, and I hate to sound condescending, but it will be. Things like this do enrich your uni life. Uh, and that's why I'd love to see you all there. Pleasure day. Uh, so after this lecture at 6, I'm going to head to the Science Theatre and buy my tickets. I haven't bought one yet because I wanted to sit with all of you guys. And there are a couple of blocks of seats that are left. 
I'd like us all to sit together and just enjoy the show and make the, all of our, our careers at uni more fat music. So after I've done that at 6, I'm going to get some dinner and come back for 7.30 at the start, and I'll see you all then. Thank you. Well done. It's, it's very scary to stand up in front of you guys because you're a very scary lot. So these guys deserve credit for that. Look, what he said wasn't condescending at all. It is absolutely the most important part of uni... Well, not the most, but up there with the most important parts of uni life going to things like this. So go along. And I think you also undersold it. It's hysterically funny. I laughed... Once I laughed so much, I fell off my seat. You know, you lose muscular control and I just slumped to the floor. It is so... Alex North had this thing about cats. Have you seen that one? Like, uh, about... Uh, they're doing that dun 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 dun, dun, dun thing about uh, piracy is bad. They say, you wouldn't steal a handbag. You know, that sort of thing. And he was going, you wouldn't get a cat and throw it off a building. And they did all this stuff. And then they said, software, pirates, kill cats. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I can't explain. It doesn't sound as funny when I do it. It just made me laugh. OK, so you should absolutely definitely go. I can't come tonight, but I'll send you some money to go up when you go up, and you can get me a ticket for another night. So I, I would love to come. Let's just take a break, stretch your legs, stretch your mind, stretch your brain, and we'll get back together again when the big hand is on a bit after the three. Yes. I have no idea where to get these tickets. Oh, let's ask him. 